All right, good morning, folks. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers of Leather Supply, and today we're going to do something a little bit different, and I'm excited about it. But um, I love watches. Um, during my time in the Army, I, uh, you're not really allowed to wear any accessories that would express yourself. So I have watches. That was the one thing that I could wear that, like, they, um, yeah, it didn't interfere with your uniform. So, I've been making a lot of watch bands over the last few years. I've been making um, some out of like alligators and exotics and things like that. And uh, anyway, I uh, this one I made yesterday and I'm super excited about it. Threw it up on social media, a lot of other people seem to like it. And after wearing it for a full day and finding out that it's quite comfortable and really nice, then uh, we're good to go. Time to make a video on how to do this, okay? So basically, it's like a regular watch band, but with an extra piece um, on the back side, okay? Um, as far as I can tell, this is called a bung, bunk, bung, bund style? I don't know, something like that. Also called an aviator style, and I'll go with that word because I understand that word. Um, but anyway, uh, historically speaking, it's said something about like way up in high altitudes where it's really really cold it keeps the cold metal watch from touching your wrist either way cool accessory all right so here's the one i made yesterday for one of my watches and i uh, went home and um, dug around in my watches and found another one that i really liked uh last night and so here's the one we're going to make this for okay it's got a little bit of a blue face on it um yeah, really nice watch. I can't stand this boring black leather strap that came with it, um, but I never look at the strap when I buy a watch because I know that I have the, the power to make another. Um, for this, we're gonna be using this really ugly piece of, um, uh, that gun. This is uh, Wicked Craig harness leather and the buck brown color. Buck brown, that's what I couldn't think of. And this is just an old, shoulder i mean they're mostly pretty ugly leather there but that's okay we're making watch straps not briefcases so we can easily find plenty of good leather to use and then i'm thinking just to tie the blue face of that watch in i might use this navy blue main thread uh, 0 0.020 size it's their new uh, waxed and braided thread um really great stuff i intend to carry this in our store we have a little bit of it right now but i, I really need to get on the ball and uh, carry a lot more of it because it's an amazing product. So, um, how do I make this? Let's start out with, we. I, I started with my, our standard uh, watch band templates that I'd already produced. Um, that you can already buy them in, uh, in a set. And I added about a half an inch to each end of the watch uh, band template set. I added that half inch because now you're not just going around your wrist you're also going over and across that extra leather piece too. So you're, it needs to be longer. It's going around more girth, okay? So it was just kind of a sh 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 shot in the dark at what I added to it. Um, but yeah, I added, uh, I added basically a full inch to the entire set. Um, and then I believe I ended up trimming just a tiny bit of the finished end back down once I kind of wrapped it around my wrist and saw it. But that's going to be the challenge with these watch bands, is they do need to be a little bit longer. Um, I have, I guess, a larger wrist than some, so I kind of had to figure that out. And uh, yeah, adding one total inch to the entire thing worked out great. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to start cutting out our pieces, and uh, we're going to get on it. All right, so here we are. I, uh went ahead and brought the camera over to the uh, the overhead so hopefully we can see more of what we're doing here so the other thing we're gonna do on this watch band is we're gonna use what's called a deployant clasp sorry um, a deployant clasp okay I really really like using these clasps um, hang on, I need to pull all the protective plastic off the one I've been wearing for all night <laughs> um, I really like these clasps not only um, you know if something happens that busts open it stays on your wrist and everything but it really adds a professional touch and a classy touch to your watch band. Um, you know, you don't have to have the buckle and stuff like that. And as a matter of fact, with a deployment clasp, if you can try it on your wrist, then you don't even have to punch all the holes for a normal buckle because the deployment clasp only needs one hole 
um, as long as you don't need adjustable sizing. Okay. So we are going to use one of those. They're extremely easy to install. And again, I feel like they le they uh, really add a classy touch to it. Um, I have some samples of these coming from a, a manufacturer to see if I can maybe have them in our shop. But for now, I get mine from a website called Esslinger, E-S-S-L-I-N-G-E-R.com. And it's called a Deployant Clasp. Here's the brand new one that we're going to use uh, today. Um, yeah. This uh, this clasp is for an 18 millimeter um, watch band, but the watch itself is a 20 millimeter. This is called the lug right here. Um, the lug of it is 22 millimeters. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of uh, of a taper to it, which is fine. Most watch bands do have a taper, um, but that's one of the problems when you're making lots of watch bands for. Um, generic when i say generic just you know you can't it's hard to make watch bands just to sell off a table because you know the difference in buckles and, and lug sizes and things like that um so again we're going from 20 meter 20 millimeters to 18 millimeters um and the good news is this one was already an 18 millimeter that i took off that watch so i can reuse that pen because i don't have any pens <laughs> i went to walmart yesterday looking for pens and i could buy an eight dollar uh watch band but um yeah no pens so i mean the, the band would have come with a pen but anyway all right so i've got three main parts here okay there's my uh the piece that goes under the strap there is the lug end piece and then here is the um or sorry that's the buckle end piece and then here's the the billet end piece as if it were a belt and all I'm going to do is set these down, and I'm going to cut them out um, of my uh, my leather here. Okay, so I already cut my leather into a much smaller piece so that I could manage it and and see it, um, and not have a giant piece, you know, walking around my desk. But here we go. Just going to cut them out. All right, so there's all three of my pieces. Get this little scrap out of the way here. There's my three main pieces. Now, all three of them also need to be lined, but there's a little bit of trickery to that. Okay, now this is, I forgot to mention, this is two to three ounce leather, and I'm going to line it with two to three ounce leather as well. Okay, now that being said, on that shoulder, there is some areas where the leather's a tiny bit thicker, and I will use that for my lining on this. Um, when I cut this one piece off, I didn't realize it was out of the thinnest part of that, that shoulder. And, um, yeah, and I want a little bit more heft to it. In all, I want it to be about six inch, six ounces thick um, on this part and 
five to six on these two as well. So, next thing I need to do. I've got a little mark, just like on the, uh, the regular watch band templates, I've, I've got a little mark here where this thing needs to be skived. Okay, and I'm just going to use my fingernail and make that mark because that'll be the fold over. Okay, this is where it's going to fold over the pen. Now on this one there's two marks because it has to fold over the, um, the uh, buckle on one end and the lug on the other end. Okay. So there we go. Um, now I need to skive those areas down. Um, I can use my nice handy dandy skiving machine or I can tempt fate with a skiving knife. And I'll tell you what, I'll do a little bit of each. I'm going to do a skiving knife on one of them, but then I'm going to use my machine on the other just for speed. Okay, I prefer the Japanese style of skiving knives. And uh, yeah, this one's from Leather Wranglers. I bought it some time ago and I just don't play with it much, so I'm going to play with it. Bring this back a little bit. Oops, I'm off camera. I'm going to bring it back just a little bit so I can get the angle down nice and... There we go. Took about half the thickness of the leather off in one whack, which is uh, very lucky for me. <laughs> I'm not the best hand skiver, um, but this knife is super duper sharp, so as long as I don't get crazy with it, it'll get the job done pretty well for me. Okay, so again, that's the uh, the billet end right there skived so that I can fold it over the uh, the uh, watch pin all right and then the other end here since that skiving went so well let's just try it out Whew. like I've been skiving all my life I have not by the way I pretty much quit practicing trying to skive when I got a nice skiving machine. And I know that's not right. I should always keep my skills sharp, but sometimes it's about time. There we go. Alrighty. We're already skived. So on the one you excuse me, the one you see here, I also skived just right around the edge. I mean barely wider than that stitch line there okay from about where my fingernail is to the very edge of the outside pieces all right um and i did that so that it would have kind of a beveled appearance to it all right and i am going to do that on this one but i'm going to do it over there on my skiving machine and i just skived just a little bit off i'm not skiving like half the thickness of the leather or anything it's just a little bit um, the other option I could do is maybe even put a thin core down the middle of this before I glue it to a liner But it's easier to just skive these pieces a little bit I am going to do that again on my machine so that I can get very even and consistent results and then I'll be right back All right, so a couple things uh, one got that skiving done It's just a tiny bit of skiving all the way around. I mean, it's almost not even noticeable but when I sew it together it will have that nice domed effect um, to it um, two I realized that uh, I was about to do the lining of the same color as the outside and to me that's just kind of boring um, kind of like these cuffs I make and stuff like that I never line them with the same thing I put on the outside because it's just neat not to see blue gator tan bridal so anyway um, yeah, so I found this uh, dark brown bridle, and we'll use that as the liner, okay? Now, lining, super duper easy, okay? Um, by the way, you know, the cool thing about a watch band is it's a very small, simple, and could be a quick project, but the more love and attention to detail you put into it, the nicer it'll be. So even though it could be a quick project, I, I don't let it be a quick project. I put a lot of effort into my watch bands. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out a bit bigger than my outside piece. Okay. And then on the um, strap portions here, 
I'm going to kind of do the same thing, except I only want it... Where's my... See where the lines are here on the template for uh, where to do my scives? I've just got little lines there. Like on the the strap, the buckle end, I only want my liner to be as as wide as long as those uh, in between those lines. And then on my billet end, same thing. I've got my line right here. I only want the billet end to come up to there, which of course it could stretch on out on this end as much as long as it needs. No worries. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and here's my billet end one. And then for my uh, strap end one, I'll go ahead and cut it the width I need, and then I'll just trim down the length I need in just a second. Just when all the big leather's out of the way, and I can marry it up and measure it here. Okay? And I can actually just go ahead and use the end that I've already got here. Line that up with my uh, sky line there, and then just cut the other end. Okay. Now. These pieces are pretty much ready to go. What I have to do is glue these together like that, and then these will fold over the ends. Or sorry, you can do them over or under. I like to do them under like that, and then they're hidden. Okay? But uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get glue all over the inside of this, all over the back side of this, um, on all of my pieces and then we're gonna start gluing them together and I'm gonna show you a little trick I like to do when I'm gluing them together but I'll be right back I'm going to uh, get me a piece of paper or something to put down so I don't get glue all over my brand new mat all right here we are using some contact cement here I'm gonna glue these main part pieces together first so I'm just gonna kinda slather my contact cement all over this piece and this is the back side of my liner way and then I'll slather some contact cement all over the back side of the uh, main body piece here making sure I get my contact cement all the way out to my edges okay as long as that the edges are glued down really well then we'll have nice pretty edges on our finest final project um, and they'll be uh, easy to burnish and stuff like that Okay, so there's those two pieces already set up with, uh, got some, some glue on them. I'm going to go ahead off camera and put glue on everything else. Nope, I'm not going to do it off camera either. I'm going to do it right in front of you because I need to show you. So this is the billet end, okay? And I'm going to put glue from the sky line down, all the way down the, the billet end, okay? And then I'm going to skip a little bit of area on there and then I'm going to put some glue on the skived part okay so I, where that watch um, pin is going to be I don't want glue if I can help it so I'll skip a little bit and then put some more down okay then on its liner though I can put glue on the entire lining piece I keep having to move further down because I've got glue all over my paper and I don't want to lay it down on my active glue. Alright, and then on the other end of the watch strap, we're going to do the exact same thing when we go to uh, uh, putting our, our contact cement on the, the front part of the strap, the outside of the strap. We'll do the exact same thing and we will skip a little area where the, um, where the pins will go. 
So we'll glue this area, then this main area in between. But we will skip about a quarter of an inch where that pin will be on each end. And then it'll be a lot easier to slide those pins in and out and we won't accidentally glue that area shut and that's important. Okay. And then on its liner we can once again just put contact cement everywhere and be good. There we go. Alright, I'm going to give this just a second to set up, get this paper out of here, and then uh, we'll talk about a little bit of special thing I do when I glue this together. Alright, I backed the camera up a little bit so I can show you this big old thing right here. It's just a giant block of wood that's kind of rounded on top. Okay, and you don't need this special piece of block of wood. You can use a coffee can, you can use a uh, can of corn, whatever, something round if you want to do it this way. Okay, and what I'm doing is, if you notice, my watch band naturally has a rounded appearance to it, even if it's unbuckled and open, like it wants to be closed. All right, um, so why that happens is because I glue it together on a round, all right, on a round surface, and this is my round surface. So to do that, I just take and I put my, my, um, my liner wrap it around there you could even if it's long enough you could even tape it down on the ends um, and then take my main body piece and I just wrap it around now this watch will forever want to be round however when I go to punch my stitching holes and things like that I can still flatten it out whoops not good pull that back off right quick I didn't get it all the way down um, the other end there all right it uh, it came off the end of the the liner down there I don't want that so I'm just repositioning it and doing it again so again I'll check it okay we're good on both ends good to go so I'm gonna press this thing down and especially around the edges where I um, where I skived I want to make sure that those edges are pressed together really, really well. Okay, and you can, I've got specialty pliers for things like that, but for now I'm just going to use my thumb and just kind of rub along it, making sure that my rough old hands and my fingernails are not scratching it while I do this, because harness leather is a, is a very pretty leather, but it does tend to get scratched. Now, as far as that goes, after a thousand scratches it looks amazing but on your first couple of scratches it just looks like you got it scratched <laughs> so um, at least for the photos um, I'd like it to not be scratched up okay now that was the main body right there now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the um, the two ends of the strap okay I am going to take a small piece of brass uh, it's about the size, diameter of a metal coat hanger. It's just a small brass wire. I'm gonna place it in there where my um, where my watch uh, pins will be, and I'm gonna close it down around it, just like that. Then I also need to put a little bit of glue on the back side of this, so that when I stick this to it, it'll adhere. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to take my skiving knife and just skive the very, very tippy edge of where it's going to go up against that. I totally forgot to do that. So I'm just going to get a little bit of skive going. And um, I'll put some more glue right there. And also on the back side of where I folded that uh, over the pin. That way everything's got something to stick to. Okay. Now when I glue this, I'll be very, very careful not to get glue where it will show outside the watch band. Okay. Then 
and I'm just going to stick them together, and I'll stick them together up here first. Press kind of firmly. Then I'll take it, oh, I don't want it to stick all the way yet. Then I'll take it and wrap it around my wood as I go down it. Okay. Just like that. And then just like before, I'm going to take my fingers and just kind of press down around the edges and stuff and make sure I got everything good and stuck. Alrighty. Very, very, um, when you glue this part up here, make sure it doesn't go all the way up to where the pin is or it'll create one hell of a bulge. Um, you want it short of the pin there. Okay, now I'm going to do the exact same thing times two on this piece. Okay, so I'll put this pin in, fold that end over. And that's the lug side or watch side. And then I'll put another pin in the other side. And fold it over. That is the band uh, buckle side. Okay. Press firmly up against there. Get that good and stuck. And then the same thing. I'm going to do a tiny bit of scabbing here on. Uh, move my metal plate over here. It's a lot easier to scab on it than on this. Uh, cutting board. Okay. Got those scabbed, but I do need to just chop it a little bit here to even all that out. There we go. Okay. So once again, I'm going to put a little bit of a adhesive glue, if you will. On the uh, the back sides of the foldovers, and where I just scabbed this down. And then I'm gonna stick it together. Again, smarter the second way I did it than the first way. I'll go ahead and do one end together, carefully and slowly. Then I'll wrap it around my, my uh, piece of wood here and do the other end. Wait a second here. If only I had three or four hands. We got a little bit of an issue here. This, uh, this liner ended up being quite a bit longer than the fold over after I did the fold. So, not a problem. We just need to trim it down a little bit. One of those wasn't super even, so it makes me happy to trim it anyway. Try that out for size again. All right. Now, again, we need to scab it. Do it this way. The width of the handle kind of gets in the way of this when I'm using this uh, 
piece of metal here. There. Should have been doing that the whole time, right? I'm sure sometimes people watch my videos and they're like, man, if this idiot would just do it this way, it'd probably work out a lot better. And you know what? I learn new things every day. And if we, if we get to the point where we stop learning new things, we're either the world's greatest or we've become closed-minded. So I am very, very sure that I'm not the world's greatest at anything. Maybe making Janie Sue mad. I'm pretty good at that sometimes. But, uh, yeah. All right, I'm going to let that glue set up for a couple of minutes. We'll be right back. All right, we're dry. Now... Again, we will line up two sides of this, lay it over our uh, bent piece of wood, Damn it, how'd that get crooked? There we go and stick her down on the curve okay work my fingers along the edges here and get them nice and smushed down she's gonna be pretty get a little bit of glue on here i'm gonna rub that off right quick all right now, I'm not going to trim these yet because I'd rather punch my stitching holes before I trim them and then I'm less likely to for my stitching holes to blow out the sides and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, this one, I even stitched it before I trimmed it. Um, but there's some issues when you get up to these areas right here when you do that, okay? So I've got to kind of decide what I want to do there to change it or be more careful with it or something like that, okay? so. I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit further here. Um, I need to turn on my heated creaser here, and that's what I'm going to use to mark my uh, my stitch lines. Now, this is a bridal leather. I could very easily, matter of fact, I know not everybody has a heated creaser, so we're going to turn that back off. I'm just going to grab me a nice little pair of wing dividers. Got a really nice set right here. They're teeny tiny. I'm going to set me a stitch line along the edges of this. Okay. There we go. All right. I'm going to bring the camera down closer like it was before. yellow line here I created so I'd quit getting off camera because it's hard to think about keeping everything in the center of the desk and not up here at my end where I can see best. I think I'd be used to this by now. Again, you know, this was put together round. It was very easy to stretch out to uh, lay flat when you go to punch your holes and make your marks and stuff like that. So, no big deals.
right. Now, I got one more thing I need to do before I can start punching holes. Okay, this thing's going along pretty quickly. Um, luckily, all the hard work, which was all the thinking, <laughs> was done um, on my first one. So, what I need to do is cut me out two pieces to use as these right here, the little retainers that keep the strap on the uh, on the backing there. Um, these ones are, I forget how wide I cut them. I, uh, I just kind of threw my ruler down and was like, oh, that looks right. Um, let's measure them right quick. Five eighths. These are five eighths of an inch wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that same. I mean, that looks pretty proportional and I like it. So I'm gonna do another one, five eighths of an inch wide. And I'm going to crease it. So it has a, uh, where'd that one go? Those little decorative lines. Since there's no stitching, I'm gonna do some creasing and put those little decorative lines on there, okay? And I've got fancy creasers, and like I said, I've got my heated creaser over here and stuff, but we're gonna go with uh, the average person's workshop, I understand, does not have all the stuff that I've got in this workshop. So we're going to uh, just use that same wing divider I was just using and do it with that. Okay. I find that wing dividers can do fine creases as long as they're not scratching the leather. And these have kind of up upturned legs, almost like the, uh, the creasers themselves have. That is a great little line. So it'll be good. And this is just one of those tiny little details that it's not necessary, but it really adds something to it to have these nice little lines in there. It gives it some, some decoration. Um, I do this a lot on the top of wallet pockets and stuff like that, and it always uh, gives it a touch of class, you know? All right, now I need two of these, so guess what? I got two of them. <laughs> All right, I need to edge and burnish these two right quick because once they're sewn on the watch, that's it. There won't be any, any more uh, trying to edge and burnish these. This is a Barry King size double zero edger here. Works great on this two ounce leather. I'm going to use token old to burnish just because it's already sitting right here beside me from the video I did yesterday. Um, generally on a uh, veg based product um, like this harness I also really like using Ron's edge rub but honestly I mean it's just an old habit that I use it. Um, token old really could replace that as my everyday burnisher for just about anything. I want to make one of these. I have an OD green um, alligator over there and I really want to make something, some sort of cool watch band out of that. But we hadn't done videos on much exotic stuff on this uh, YouTube channel and I think we should. If you think we should, leave me a comment. That will motivate me to do it. <laughs> Alright. Do a tiny bit of burnishing with some token oil here. doesn't take much on this tiny little bit of leather but again if you don't burnish it you'll see it and forever you'll look at it and be like man I should have burnished that done it before I'll do it again <laughs> I'll burnish the other one, then we're going to talk about gluing it on. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera so you don't have to watch another minute of that. Alrighty. Now i got to glue these uh, these pieces on here, right? 
So I just kind of pick an arbitrary area, but I want to make sure that it's the same on both ends. So this is roughly a half an inch above the end. I'm going to hold it up there to where I know it's nice and straight, and then just make a very slight impression with my fingernail to mark it. Okay. Now I'm going to take my little detail rougher here and just rough up that area just a tiny, tiny bit so that it'll hold glue well. Making sure not to accidentally rough outside of where this thing will be because you don't want to scratch up the finish of your watch band. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other end. Okay. Hold it up there, it's going to be right at a half an inch from the base, or the end. Mark it with my fingernail, find one that I haven't recently chewed off, which is rare. Bad habit, I know. Alright, a little bit of roughing. And I think what I'm going to do, I think this time, I'm going to poke my holes for my stitching. Then I'm going to um, go ahead and trim this and then stitch it. And we're going to see how that works out because then I can we'll trim it, burnish it, then stitch it. And that way those little areas um, where, the, where the, uh, the thread from the watch band goes around the edge I won't be screwing with those and hitting them with sandpaper and stuff like that. Excuse me, later on, okay? Maybe a recipe for disaster, time will tell. That's the great thing about it. Sometimes I experiment right here on the camera, right? If it doesn't work out, you'll never see this video. If it does work out, then obviously you're watching it. <laughs> Tiny bit of glue just in those same areas. Same here, I'm just holding it up so I can see where on this little strap to put the glue. There we go. There's one end. I'll flip it around, leave my corresponding end with it, and I'll do the other end right quick. getting stringy. Alrighty. Um, now we're just going to stick those on there right quick. And then we're going to punch some stitching holes and then we're going to trim the uh, just one second here Let me get that back squared up like it was there we go I'm going to get set up to do my uh, my stitching holes, so I'll be right back. Alright, so as I get ready to uh, use my irons here and punch my holes through, I just need to transfer these lines up across the uh, little retention things that we added here. So I'm just going to line it up with a straight edge and mark it with a uh, scratch-all or any other 
marking type device. And that way I can see when I'm running those irons, um, I'll maintain a straight and accurate uh, line, okay? Other than that, I've got my uh, rubber board underneath here, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty simple. With this piece here, we'll do our our uh, our uh, stitching uh, stitch holes all the way around the uh, the perimeter of it there. Okay, but with these, we want the stitch holes to end. Let me just set the first ones here. Right about there. Okay, now a neat little trick, if you want to make sure that your other one on the other side is exactly the same height, you can take a pair of wing dividers like these, okay, and uh, place, open it up until it's inside the, the first stitch hole and the other side of it is exactly um, on the edge of the watch band there, and then just transfer that mark to the other side. And then when I, hit it over here I know that those are the same height um, you know the same distance from the watch pin up here okay so I'm going to do the same thing here and uh, yeah and then all the way across here I'm gonna run all these stitching holes but my camera needs a charge, so I'm not going to do it on camera. And then we'll continue on after that with the hand sewing and uh, stuff like that. There we go. Okay, got all my stitching holes punched. Now, I'm going to carefully remove my pins. I'm not pulling them all the way out. I'm just pulling them through so that I can take my uh, little blade here and go ahead and cut these edges down. Trim them off. Then I'll push them through to the other side and do the same thing. The only reason I'm even moving the pens in case I, I don't want to nick my blade. I mean, with these disposable blades, it's fine, but if I was using a good knife. There we go. So I gotta do that to all three pieces here. And then also I cut my uh, my stitch holes just a little bit short here because I actually want to trim and kind of reshape that bottom, that uh, point there. I don't, I don't really like it. It's not very even. I'll, I'll do the trimming here and then I'll um, reshape that bottom edge right quick. Alright, I just want to make it a little less pointy, I guess you could say. Alright, I'm not sure if I got the objective done there or not but anyway um, all right and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this piece too the first thing I'm gonna do is um, put a straight edge up here and cut these ends off of these uh, retainers okay and then I'll cut everything else Um, 
Um, I failed to mention um, I did my stitching holes at 10 stitches per inch, um, which if you're doing millimeters, that's roughly, I think like 2.5 millimeters, I think. Anyway, um, pretty small stitches on these watch bands because I really, you know, I'm all about your stitch length should kind of be variable to the size of your project. And this is a small project, but again, every detail matters because the smaller the project, the more that every detail uh, sticks out. If I was doing a rifle scabbard, you wouldn't notice a missed stitch somewhere. But on a little bitty watch band, you're going to notice it. And then you're going to judge me. <laughs> All right, now I'm just going to cut out the entire thing here. I'm going to cut it out just like I did everything else, so I'm going to save you a couple of seconds of viewing and uh, pause the video, but I'm also, as soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to burnish some edges. Alrighty, got that done. Now I'm just going to sand these edges just a little bit to ensure that any glue that might have been on that top edge is uh, gone. Okay, so just a tiny bit of sanding, nothing, nothing major, nothing crazy. Just want to make sure there's no glue and then also that it burnishes really well. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to sand all these pieces just like this and uh, then I'm going to edge them and then I'm going to burnish them. Then we're going to sew. Yeah. Alright, so earlier I used a size double zero beveler on this, that one layer, um, but the, the strap itself is a little bit thicker, um, so I'm going to use a size zero Barry King grooved edger, and I'm going to edge it just like I'd edge any other piece of leather. Carefully. <laughs> one side and I'll push these pins over and do the other side. Again, I'm trying to keep these pins in here because I don't want to find out that there might be glue in that and then accidentally crush one of those closed and have to try to pry it open um, because it probably would not look nice. So just like that, I'm going to edge all of these pieces, and then I'm going to use my uh, tokenol and um, burnish them, uh, just like I did those other pieces there. Um, and then I'll show you a neat little trick, but after all that's done. So I'll be back. All right, I've got all those edges nice and pretty and shiny, but I promised you a trick, okay? So let me show you your trick. <laughs> so I'm using harness leather, and harness leather has a lot of wax in it, okay? Which is a good thing. That's why we love harness. Um, but when you burnish an oil, a leather that has a lot of wax to it, you can take your canvas and rub it even on the surface of the leather and really get some friction going. And it'll give it a very aged and worn look. Okay, I just did that right there. Hopefully we're focusing on it just fine. But anyway, I'm going to take this watch band and I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do that. I want, I love that aged and worn look. So I'm gonna move my pens out of the way there, and I'm just gonna, not over the entire thing, but over a good portion of the edges, create a little bit of heat and friction. And there you can see it. Uh, this side versus this side. Um, this side has more uh, of a burnished uh, look to it. Um, looks kind of antiquey. Um, so anyway, that's that's what I'm going to do over the edges of this. It's almost like when I do my airbrushing and I do my the, the sunburst effect or whatever on the edges or the, the fade effect on the die. It just gives it some pre-aging, looks kind of cool, you know, stuff like that. Man, that's nice. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to do that to all these pieces. When I come back, we're going to do some hand stitching. 
Alrighty, so stitching time she comes. Here, here's uh, the uh, buckle end of my watch band right here in my, my stitching clamp. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you my stitching on this one part because the rest of it is all the same. Alright, so what I like to do though is um, I will start two stitches from one of the ends and I'm going to back stitch first. Okay. So we're gonna go right there, two from the one closest to me. And back stitch towards me. All right, and then once I get, by the way, I took the little metal pins out. I don't want to, but they're gonna fall out anyway while I'm doing this, so I might as well control the fall and just put them on my desk. <laughs> Alright, so I'm down at the end now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch needles and I'm going to let that stitch come up over the top of the watch band like that, or the, the, the edge, okay? And um, that is why I wanted to burnish my edges before I stitched. Normally I would never do that. Um, but that is exactly why I wanted to do this because when I did it on the other one, you know, then I had a burnishing issue um, since I didn't do it in this particular order. So anyway, now I'm going to stitch all the way up the watch band just as normal, but I'm going to do the exact same thing at the other end, um, up over the top and then back stitch two stitches. Okay. So I'm going to be quiet because I'm going to go into hyper stitching mode here. And uh, then when we get to the other end, we'll, we'll talk about it again. So here I am, I'm stitching the very last hole on the same end, okay, and again I'm going to cross over the top and then do my back stitches and leave that, uh, that loop over the edges of the, uh, or the sides of the uh, watch band. Gives it a nice handmade look, it's a lot of strength up there where the, uh, where the pins are, which is very important. Backstitch two more stitches again, and uh, that's it. And then I've shown it a million times, but when I go to uh, cut these strings, I'm going to take my blade here and I'm going to stick it in the end of my little stitching clamp. And I'm just going to rub the, the string against the blade. And that way I'm not doing any kind of sawing motion with the blade and I don't accidentally cut my leather or um, a stitch. Alrighty, so I'm going to sew. The other side just like that and then I'm gonna sew the the other end just like that and then I'm gonna sew the the whole base piece all the way around and uh, when that's all said and done we'll come back and we'll learn how to install a deployment clasp all right all the stitching is done and I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am 
about how that navy blue works with the uh, the watch face. So I'm really glad we chose that. So we've got one more thing that we have to make, and then we can be um, we can be done. And that is the little keeper. Okay, just like on a belt, the watch band needs a keeper. And um, on when I'm doing an, a, 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 a deployment clasp like this. Um, I leave it free floating, okay? On some watch bands, I sew it in right after the uh, right after the buckle, but on this one, it's going to just be a free floating um, loop, if you will, okay? So, keeper time. Let's talk about that. So I need to move all that out of the way, even though it looks amazing and I'm super excited about it. I'll be wearing this watch home instead of that green one tonight. <laughs> all right. So I just need to cut me a little piece of my leather out to make this keeper. Um, there is no set how big I make a keeper because it, it, it's uh, um, relevant to the size of the, the entire watch band and stuff, okay? So I'm just gonna take my ruler and put it up here and kind of decide that, oh yeah, that looks about right. So I'm thinking, half an inch. We're going to make it a half an inch wide. Okay, so it's now a half an inch wide. Now I want to take my uh, my little wing dividers that I did my other um, creases with and go ahead and crease this bad boy too. And then I'm going to burnish my edges. Okay, I'll take that double zero edger and I will go ahead and edge and then burnish and then I'll show you how I do my sizing on it. Okay, so I'll be right back. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and burnish these edges off camera. Um, as I know this video is already getting pretty long and uh, yeah, when I come back, I'll show you how I size this thing. All right, so there it is, nicely burnished. Now we need to cut it to size, okay? So I need the, um, the, the buckle end of this side of my band and somewhere around here, I need the other end of the, uh, the billet end, okay? And this is super simple. I'm gonna wrap it around, both of them. And I'm gonna put a little fingernail mark on both layers as it wraps on top of each other because I need to skive the top of one or sorry the top of, of this one underneath sorry top of uh, this one underneath and the bottom of this one right here okay I need to skive them so that when I glue them together they'll marry up really nicely and there won't be bulk underneath there okay so I'm gonna take my fingernail and I'm just gonna mark right there and then the exact same place underneath did it even with the stitch is where I know the to do it okay and again I'm gonna skive the top of this one down then I need to cut the other end off and then skive down uh, my cut it where my mark was and then I need to skive down to that end okay so when I wrap it back around those two again it should wrap very nicely overlap itself and um, do, do, 
There we go. Overlaps itself really nicely. I'm going to glue it together just like that. Um, and that way we can uh, put a couple of stitches in it because we don't want to just rely on the glue. Okay, we want to stitch this thing too. So, a little dab of glue. back toward me here. I keep getting off of it. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Okay. Take these two and I'm going to do this on the bottom side in case I accidentally get some glue on my uh, finished watch strap here. At least it'll be on the bottom side. I'm going to wrap those around the, uh, the strap. Get it nice and even. There we go. Beautiful. It's good and snug, but not super tight. I can easily pull one out, and uh, it'll be all right. Okay. Now, I need to sew that. So I need to take, this is just a, uh, a little scrap of leather here. Um, I need to take and uh, cut a little sliver of thick leather that will fit inside there so that I can use my pricking iron um, to, uh, to put a couple of holes in it without going all the way through to the front side. You know what I mean? So if I fit this over it like that right there, and I grab my little stitching iron here, and I'm just going to hand push it through and create a couple of holes. And I'm going to do five. There we go. Now, when I go to sew this, I'm just going to use one needle. It's very difficult to do a proper saddle stitch inside this. So I'm going to use one needle. I'm going to go in through the middle hole. Okay. So I went in through the middle hole. Now I'm just going to come back up through either side of that middle hole and work my way out to one end and then go around and come back and that will complete a, a saddle type stitch where there will be a stitch on both the top and the bottom on every stitch. Okay. So I just looped it in and out and went to, to one end of it. Now I'm going to come back out that hole right there, back in the center hole where I'd started anyway, and go to the other end, just whip stitching in and out until I get to where I'm going. there. Alright, now I'm back to the center hole again, but I also kind of need to tie this stitch off, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do an extra couple of stitches as like a back stitch, um, back where I started here. And it'll be good. Then we can cut this sucker loose. Now, the only thing I have left to do is install all my watch pieces. Okay, so I'm going to put the watch 
start putting the watch band together. So we have our deployant clasp. All right. Actually, first, give me a second. I need to. There it is. Never mind. I have it now. I have my deployant clasp. Okay. Now this part of it, um, the open end here, is going to go on the uh, on the buckle end of my watch band. All right. So I'm going to send that buckle end. When you make a, when you do a watch, the buckle end. If you're looking at the watch and the the uh, the crown of it's over here, then the buckle end would be up here. Okay. So I'm going to send this sucker through there. Probably need to open that space up a little bit to make some room for it because I made it nice and tight. So I don't want it to wiggle around too much. Now, do not forget to put your um, your keeper on there and then we're gonna do our clasp okay super easy to get these pins in you just put one end in one hole and then squeeze the other end in and then wiggle it into position and it'll pop right back into that pop right into that hole like it ought to be say that now that I'm doing it on camera I can't do it <laughs> tell you what I've got a little screwdriver shaped tool here that might help with this because my fingernails not doing it You know, I could do this 15 times in a day and it would work every dang time. Do it in front of a camera. All right, let me pause this and make sure I even have the right size of flipping pen in here. I'll be right back. All right, this is the right size pin. I got it in there without the leather, so we're gonna try it again, I guess. <laughs> I've done the same thing with zippers, you know? I've gotten real good at building zippers, but when I'm just standing in front of a class or a camera, there, popped right in, just like it was always supposed to. <sighs> Embarrassing. All right, now, it's time to put the watch on. Same concept, we got pins, we gotta use them. The pins are still in the old watch strap that came off the watch. This watch has never been worn. I, I have a lot of watches, like I said. Ooh, and this is one of those special watch uh, uh, straps. Uh, the little pin actually makes it easy for you to pull in and out. But what stinks about that is I'm going to have to cut the old watch strap out and then force that sucker onto the new one because I didn't leave a little spot for that. Uh, little trigger there where you could open it up. Yeah, look at this genuine leather that this crap's made out of. Pretty expensive watch to have such a cheap uh, band. All right, let me, um, I gotta cut these out. They're glued in here or something, or I don't know. This watch band is crap, but I need that pen. So give me a minute, I'll be back. All right, so I have the deployant clasp on one side of the watch band now, okay? Um, to get on to the other side, what we have to do is, it's got a little, you can see a little pin right there. Um, it opens like that. And then that little post right there goes into one of the holes on your watch strap. Now we have not put any holes on our watch strap yet. So this is where if you're making it for one person and you really want to custom make it, you don't have to punch a bunch of holes over here. You can just wrap it around their wrist and close the deployant clasp and kind of overlap each other and figure out where that one hole should be. However, it's very difficult for me to do trying to see on the camera plus hold it still plus everything else. I'm just going to use my special, special um, watch band hole punches that I bought on, I bought them on Etsy. They were very expensive, but that's why I'm going to use them because I sure hate that I bought them and I hardly ever use them. <laughs> 
So I'm gonna pull that sucker, um, the billet in down a little bit. Okay. There we go. And I'm just going to put some holes in here right around where I know they should be. Gonna center them well. Sure would hate for them not to be centered. And give it a whack. There we go. So now I get to loosen up that, wrap this thing around my wrist. I should close the deployment clasp to uh, do this measuring and sizing here. Okay. I wonder how many times I've said deployment today. It's a bunch. All right. This is very difficult to do uh, by myself, even without the camera, but I'm, I'm, we're going to try. <laughs> I'll put the watch down on the desk. Wrap this sucker around. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna figure out which hole it would be. And then I will um, go ahead and do it without my wrist in it. I'm gonna try for the second hole, okay? So let's see how that works. So, all you do is, this part comes up from the back, goes into whichever hole you want it in, and then you just kind of close it in on the, from the back side there, get it in, work it into that hole. Um, I did use a very small, I've got several different sizes of hole punches for these, and I used kind of a small one because I wanted to use, uh, I don't want the hole to be or the holes to be uh, too big. But that means I kind of have to work that little post in there. There we go. All right. So there it is. Now, let's see if I can actually get it on my wrist. The first one or two times is always difficult to close just because the leather's not broken and stuff like that. beautiful that's the tiniest bit snug but I know in five minutes it's gonna feel a lot looser because it's all gonna break in and find its places and everything and that's good if it doesn't then I'll loosen that one more hole and we'll call that good to go so there it is folks we, uh, we made an aviator style watch band also called a bunt or something like that I I don't know. For some reason, I just can't remember the other name for it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. A lot of fun. Very nice, professional-looking watch band for a really nice watch. I'm excited to have it in my collection. Um, yeah. So, as always, guys, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and I uh, hope you have a great day.